An emergency approach and landing is a maneuver that simulates an engine failure during flight. Emergency approaches and landings are procedures that all pilots must remain proficient in to be ready for out-of-the-ordinary situations, such as engine abnormalities or failures. Since emergencies occur suddenly and unexpectedly, pilots must keep the procedures proficient in the events they need to be performed. To properly conduct an emergency approach to landing while in the traffic pattern, first, the pilot or instructor simulates an engine failure by smoothly pulling the throttle to idle, a beam the intended touchdown point in the traffic pattern. Next, the pilot establishes the best glide attitude and airspeed of 68 knots using nose up trim to assist. If the aircraft's airspeed is above glide speed, the pilot must maintain their current altitude until the best glide airspeed is reached to provide the most time to handle the emergency. Note, the best glide speed of 68 knots only applies in zero wind, which is almost never the case. The rule of thumb for adjusting glide speed is to take the best glide speed of 68 knots and add 50% of headwind component. For example, if the headwind component during landing is 8 knots, the pilot would add 4 knots to 68 making the best glide speed 72 knots based on the current wind conditions. Once the pilot has pitched for the best glide speed, they simulate performing these memory items. Pull the fuel shutoff valve out to stop the fuel flow. Pull the mixture out to cut off. And turn the ignition key to off. Next, the pilot turns a modified base leg. The base leg is not squared off or as far out as a standard base leg in the traffic pattern. Pilots must take into consideration the wind speed and direction, their altitude, and distance from the runway before beginning their modified base leg. In stronger wind days, pilots should turn their modified base leg closer to the threshold of the runway to ensure they will make a landing on the runway surface. On lighter wind days, their modified base leg will be further from the runway threshold to allow for a stable descent to the runway and not to come in too high and overshoot the runway. Once established on a modified base leg, the pilot must evaluate their position and altitude and adjust their ground track and aircraft configuration by adding flaps and conducting a forward slip as necessary to manage the descent. As the pilot turns to final, they must determine if landing is assured. If so, they then add any more necessary flaps incrementally while maintaining the best glide speed by adjusting the pitch of the aircraft. If the aircraft is low in altitude, the pilot should not add flaps and head directly to the runway. If the aircraft is too high, the pilot should add full flaps incrementally and conduct a forward slip to decrease their altitude to a desired glide slope to the runway. Once the pilot has lowered the necessary flaps, they then turn the standby and master batteries off. Note, all flaps must be added before turning off the main battery as they are powered by the main battery. Unlatch the doors. Some helpful tips for conducting emergency descents in the traffic pattern are as follows. When operating at a controlled airport, the student or instructor needs to request a short approach with sufficient notice to air traffic control when performing this maneuver. This request is recommended prior to the downwind leg. Pilots must be wind conscious so they can conduct the proper distance while on their modified base leg for the existing wind. Assuming a normal pattern distance and altitude, with light winds, turn base slightly later to allow more distance for the descent. With stronger winds, turn early or immediately after establishing the best glide speed because the headwind on final will drastically reduce the glide distance. No matter what, the turn to a modified base is always sooner than the normal base leg turn. Once the landing is assured, extend flaps as appropriate. If landing is not assured, do not add flaps. If necessary, a no-flap landing can be conducted. Adding flaps when landing is not assured may cause the pilot to be short of the runway. The intended glide speed should be adjusted for the strength of the headwind component on the final. Stronger headwinds will require an increase in the best glide speed to compensate for the slower ground speed, whereas light headwinds will require little or no increase to the best glide speed. The Airman Certification Standards for Emergency Landings from the Traffic Pattern are as follows. Pitch for the best glide airspeed, plus or minus 10 knots. Establish the appropriate track to manage your descent to the runway based on the wind conditions. Touch down within the first third of the available runway. All memory items and checklists must be simulated. Be sure to like our video and subscribe for more epic content. And while you're here, check out some of our more recent videos and playlists.